a death blaster off Rotscrag earlier. Nice little killer. Just ask Rotscrag. <laughs> The Orcs are the definition of warlike aliens in the galaxy of M41. Their number is incalculable, and they are at this point all but seeded throughout the entire galaxy. Their origin is believed to lie in the ancient history of the known galaxy, when the Old Ones fought their nemesis enemies, the Necrontier, and in desperation seeded many new life forms they believed could potentially aid them. The weak point of the Necron tier of course being the warp such as it was in these times, and the orcs like the Eldari have an affinity with warp energy, however unlike the Eldar, the orcs are far more physical creatures. Yes their war energy gives them some strange gestalt unity, but the orcs are beings defined by literal grinding bloody attrition. Orcs' unrelenting thirst for slaughter and war is near unstoppable, as it is intrinsically designed into them. But for as much as this is a driving force, it can also be their biggest weakness, as they will often spend as much time fighting themselves as they were an enemy, and thus this strange duality of the Orcs exists. From the human perspective, there's an inherent comedy to all Orc things, including their weaponry, and it's something which the Orcs themselves are well aware of. There is a certain self-awareness there, because their technology often involves some extremely bizarre teleportation devices, phasing in and out of reality, or just spawning things inside of enemies. Of course, none of this beats just a big loud shooter spewing a ton of ammo. Orcs have, through their strange genetically infused motivations, cultivated an intrinsic connection with firearms, which transcends them being mere tools of slaughter. Orcs, of course, refer to their shooters broadly as Daka, and their weapons exist very much as an extension of their nature and serve to satisfy this insatiable lust for combat. But the relationship between orcs and their guns is far more than just an appreciation of shooty things or some fetishistic obsession with implements of war. Weapons for orcs are an extraordinary fusion of their biology, culture, and raw instincts. Remembering that's culture with a K. Because embedded deep within the genetic fabric of all orcish physiology is an innate understanding of technology which defies all human logic, and this profound connection enables them to wield even the most complex of weapons with uncanny proficiency and an inherent mastery that is often underestimated for their brutish appearance. This, of course, was the genius of the Old Ones, to create a species that could not be crushed in terms of morale, that could not be broken by conventional methods of war, and that no matter the scrap rubble they were presented with upon a world, could stand and fight against almost any enemy. The Orcs are, by all definitions, an indomitable species. They have existed far longer than humanity, and shown no signs of being any less ferocious and aggressive nor stalwart in their campaigns of endless war than they were from their initial emergence into the galaxy. For an Orc, their bestest shooter, or Daka, is far more than just an assemblage of metal and machinery. It's an expression of their collective psyche, an embodiment of their unrestrained passion for violence. The cacophony of gunfire, the explosive discharge of projectiles, and the visceral satisfaction of watching enemy ranks crumble before them resonates deeply within the Orc psyche. To an Orc, the act of firing a weapon itself is akin to a primal beating of a drum. It's an exultant declaration of dominance over an enemy as they charge across a battlefield. Within their sprawling tribes and warbands, firearms are revered as objects of identity and camaraderie. The clatter of shell casings hitting the ground and the acrid scent of powder are intoxicating elixirs that can unite orcs into a hypnotic bloodlust. From the outside, their weapons may appear ramshackle, pieced together from mere scavenged parts. Yet many would pay the price for such ignorance for even many Orc have no idea just how powerful their strangely cobbled together weaponry will be until they start actually dacca at the enemy. Like almost everything Orc, their bond and connection to shooters defies rational explanation. This strange blending of instinct and Orc culture is as fascinating as it is terrifying to humanity, because for any who would mistakenly underestimate the brutish charging greenskins, only horrific and devastating consequences await, for the sound of Orc Daka 
heralds an unstoppable tide of raging violence for those who dare to stand in its path. And it's long been said that when the orcs are on the rampage, the galaxy trembles. So truly, it would be an insult to orc kind if I didn't start with the undoubtedly finest piece of weaponry in the orc arsenal. Because for all the crazy, mad, smashed together invented, invented insanity that orcs have at their disposal, nothing can really beat a proper shooter. So what would that be? Well, it's really anything you want, to be honest, because if there's one thing orcs hate, it's having the same thing as somebody else. Because by definition, this means your shooter cannot possibly be better than their shooter, which is never what you want. That's orc logics for you. More defined, an orc shooter is going to be a kinetic projectile weapon, which still leaves plenty of room for interpretation and individual mech boy embellishment. But for an orc, there is something more proper about a no funny stuff shooter. The look, the sound, the feel, the smell. None of that fancy energy malarkey, no weak spewy flames everywhere, no messing about with squigs. A shooter that goes dacker and you see instantly your enemy scatter into pieces all over the place. What's better than that? Well, presumably one which has even more dacker. An orc shooter is basically a fully automatic weapon designed for individual direct fire. So it's a machine gun. And this is a very common force for the orcs, a massive boy a massive mob of boys all charging forward, laying down a stinging hailstorm of admittedly low strength but smothering wall of dacca spewed from their shooters. And of course, no self-respecting orc would just settle for a plain shooter. You'll want to also have a decent chopper to hand as well, which as an implement is fairly self-explanatory. But until you get close enough to start chopping some heads, an orc will truly revel in their shooter spraying a deafening torrent of rounds at the enemy. But as with most orc weapons, simplicity does not necessarily mean ineffectiveness. Although admittedly the phrasing of effective in and of itself in orc terms is something of a subjective term. Why? Well, because so long as it's spraying shots towards the enemy, making a ton of noise and generally giving you that daka daka feeling, the consequences of just how much damage it's doing to an enemy may not be the singular category that you judge how effective it is upon. Of course, that being said, if it's making the stupid umis go squish and splat, and generally exploding in a shower of red viscera, this is going to be very enthusing for an orc, so your shooter would undoubtedly get a point for that. But this is the thing. Generally, making a lot of noise, a lot of show, and revving up the boys is what a lot of shooters are all about. It's not necessarily about can you pierce space marine armour, or how many small squishy umis go splatter. It's much more about the big show of shooting daka and the angry noise that it's making. So that when the boys charge in and start chopping, they're in a suitably frenzied state of angry madness. And this is genuinely a true benefit for orcs as well, because they can get quite the morale boost from loud noises or in general anything that they think is going to scare their enemies. So the louder the shooter, the more damage it can do, theoretically in terms of orcs, and the bigger distance that they can use it from, this is all the better. Shooters can of course scale up massively and encompass a huge variety of orc weapons, from the humble automatic shooter used by any mob of charging boys, scaled up to weapons mounted upon their gargant mechs like the Deathstorm Mega Shooter and the Rattler Cannon. But any orc, with even a slight amount of reputation, will not settle for just a basic shooter. They'll want to have themselves a custom job, a custom combi weapon. It's pretty much as it sounds a ramshackle combination of various weapon types, so this could be almost anything that is just bolted or welded together by a mech. Much like human combination combi weapons, an orc could just strap a plasma, a flame weapon, maybe another shooter to give it double the daka, so called daka guns. And while every orc shooter will be slightly different, they're generally classed as being your base shooter for any boy in the mob. You might see a heavier variant, more like a light machine gun, although the orcs just call them a big shooter. And with significant recoil and the sparks and the smoke produced, this is going to make it all the more desirable, not to mention its increased range. Iron sighted shooters are much like a standard mob shooter, but they seem to fire with an increased fire rate and some sort of tracer rounds meaning an orc boy can simply just fire roughly in the direction of an enemy and then adjust as necessary. 
There are always innumerable variations. Orcs, of course, are seen to wield some shooters that are akin to a shotgun, and they generally just refer to these as cannon. Far less popular than a standard shooter, of course, because while they do make a big bang when fired, they have to be tediously reloaded, and can only be used effectively really at shorter range, so they're just not as fun to use. Still though, any orc who can keep one for a backup weapon and pull it out on an unsuspecting Umi guardsman is going to have a proper laugh from the boys when he fires it at the Umi and they're turned instantly into a red cloud, their body being shredded by the massive blast. So an orc's best shooter is always going to be chosen due to its noise and the display it can make first and the amount of damage it can do second. But orcs are of course as infinitely variable as their weapons, so it may well be that another orc is going to choose their shooter based on how much damage it can do first and how much noise and display it can make second. But really every orc knows the best shooter is as loud as it is deadly. There are few weapons that embody the sheer brazen audacity meshed with the wild creativity of the orcs as the Pulsar Rocket. It's a devastating projectile weapon, a marvel of orcish engineering, if it can be really called that. Because this epitomises the reckless and unapologetic nature of the Greenskins. To the orcs, the Pulsar Rocket is not just a weapon, it's a spectacle, a source of laughter, and a tangible embodiment of their boisterous enthusiasm for destruction. At first glance, the Pulsar Rocket might seem like a deranged contraption, a mishmash of scavenged parts and reckless modifications that defy all logic, but this is pretty standard for orcs. And this very eccentricity is what endears it to the orcs, because after all, why follow established norms when you can create something wildly unpredictable, extremely dangerous, and immensely satisfying. This is what makes the Pulsar Rocket a favourite among orcs. When fired, it will hurtle through the air with a distinctive ear-splitting roar, trailing a plume of smoke and flame. The anticipation among the orcs will be palpable as they eagerly watch the trajectory of the projectile, knowing that whatever lies in its path is in for a spectacular surprise. Because when it finally lands, the Pulsar Rocket's impact is nothing short of cataclysmic, as upon striking its target, it releases a shockwave of massive seismic proportions that sends enemies sprawling and structures crumbling. The power behind this lies in the fact that the rocket is actually a special force field generator is basically just thrown into the midst of battle, and this is achieved by simply strapping it to a rocket, which is pretty big thinking when it comes to orc tech. This force field generator is a special design known as a pulsar. It's a strange whirling machine that detaches from its parent rocket shortly before impact, so much so it's often imperceptible, and as this lands, the impact of the weapon causes the force field inside into a state of collapse which then sends out these powerful shock waves of energy like a heavy stone being thrown into a lake. Depending on the pulsar, it may produce one powerful shock wave or continuous rippling bursts. To the orcs, the sheer absurdity and unpredictability of the pulsar rocket's effects are a source of immense amusement. They revel in the sight of enemies being tossed through the air like ragdolls, vehicles being upended, and fortifications being reduced to rubble. The cacophony of destruction is like music to the orc ear, and the roars of laughter that accompany a successful pulsar rocket strike reverberate across the battlefield. The sheer joy that orcs derive from witnessing the weapon's over-the-top effect is a testament to their love of the grand spectacle of war. Additionally, despite their seemingly chaotic nature, they're not entirely devoid of cunning, because utilising a pulsar rocket strategically Disrupting enemy formations, creating diversions, or targeting high-value enemy appeals to an orc's desire for tactical ingenuity and a bit of clever mischief. Each firing of the weapon is of course a gamble, like so many orc things, and it can lead to either jaw-dropping success or hilariously disastrous outcomes for all concerned. Something that the orcs embrace gladly, the chaotic results are the driving excitement of war, no matter how outrageous they may be. So when the Pulsar rocket known as the Big Red Fist was launched at Imperial forces invading Gogrok Island, its emitted pulses were so powerful that it levelled an entire Ultramarine's company into the surface of the island. The shockwave so powerful that in the moments after impact it destabilised the entire structure of the island itself and the force pulses caused the entire archipelago to collapse. Soon after the Ultramarines, were falling down into the polluted depths of the deep waters. 
So pulsar rockets encapsulate all that orcs appreciate in a weapon. Crazy design, explosive results, and a wildly unpredictable nature. The sheer spectacle in the aftermath of its effects also make it a popular addition to a war boss's arsenal. Not to mention that being the boy or mech given the task of launching and operating a pulsar rocket allows them to stand out, something to boast about later and tell a bit of a story, become a centre of attention, and claim the rightful adulation of fellow orcs through the spectacular display of firepower unleashed that likely could turn the entire tide of a battle or even campaign. In a larger sense to the orcs, and likely for many it's something they feel more than they might consciously ponder upon, the Pulsar Rocket is not just a means of destruction, it's a symbol of their entire culture, because the largest of Pulsar Rockets are in effect representing the power of Gork or Mork, or as some might have it, the power of Mork or Gork. The immense force unleashed upon its impact in the eyes of the orc is something they very well might imagine to be the power of the orc gods themselves crushing their enemy flat with a fist or a foot. Some orc rockets are appropriately named as such, Foot of Gork for example. And even though any rocket is rarely the same, some may literally be just a big generator with wings strapped on it that's basically flung toward an enemy. Others may be far more well designed, a huge ship-like construction with multiple thrust pods and stabilizers. But no matter the size or design, all pulsar rockets crush the enemy into the ground with sheer orc willpower, meaning the boys with the shooters will have plenty of time to reach the enemy front lines. Now I am cheating today a little because four notable choices sit within the mech guns category. But it's with good reason, because some of the best read most insane orc weapons come from of course the mechs. And also, as the Orcs would have it, the best is the best. Mechs or mech boys are of course the engineers who build all the guns, vehicles and other machinery used by the Orcs. And these mech boys are one of the prime examples of the Orc race, because their abilities with tech and inventing are not learned, nor do they necessarily even come from how more or less intelligent a mech is although it likely could have some small benefit because mech knowledge and ability with constructing machinery appears like most orc traits to be genetically engineered into them, much like their predecessors, their ancestors, the brain boys. And so it's both comical that orcs can just bash things together and somehow it works, but also being extremely frustrating to those among, say, the Mechanicus, who see these barbaric Xenos able to still create technology which surpasses the Imperiums with barely any understanding and barely any effort. Whilst mechs will create all the armaments needed for their mobs and their big boss, they also just love to create and fashion all manner of strange devices and weaponry. And some might favour some kind of squig chucker, because throwing a gnashing ball of fleshy teeth at your enemy always seems like a good idea, but they're also able to create quite terrifying pieces of support or artillery weaponry. These may not be operated by orcs themselves because, quite honestly, any orc with an ounce of self-respect would never be seen sitting at the rear lines of an assault pressing a button on a big mech contraption, but they would appreciate of course the benefit of its heavy firepower raining down fiery death upon their enemy, screaming and laughing as they charge into the devastated enemy lines to smash some heads and break through the ubies. So big mech guns will tend to be pulled along behind by, unsurprisingly, a crew of Grots, aka Gretchen. Gretchen of course being one of the main lesser orc forms. And these Grots are always tasked with kind of valuable roles, but something that an orc will see as well being beneath them. And so whilst the wagons, trucks and bikes are speeding past with roaring orcs on them, the Gretchen will be dragging some awkward and perhaps over-designed piece of scrap metal into position, on the promise if it doesn't explode on first operation, they'll definitely get to kill some Umis and get some approval of the bigger orcs. As is often the case with Gretchen tasks, they may have actually no idea what will happen when they first operate the mech gun, or quite honestly every time they operate it thereafter. It's just as likely to implode and transport them all into the warp as it is to fire at the enemy. But even for a Grot they have some sense of self-preservation. And so the threat of operating a mech gun can easily be used by other orcs to keep their own grots in check back in the mech town or the orc town. To give an idea of how scared Gretchen are of this assignment, even a cursory threat of being sent to shoot the guns is enough for them to double their efforts. 
as with most orc weapons, mech guns have almost endless possibilities. They have no standard format, and their function could vary from pulse rockets, mega cannon, mass squig throwing catapults, some kind of shockwave or other strange energy being thrown at the enemy, and far more bizarre things. Most common though are the custom mega cannon or blasters. These are energy weapons of terrifying power, and able to simply vaporize space marine terminators. They will wreak terrifying damage to heavy armored vehicles, although as the name custom implies, these are even more unstable than ordinary orc armament, no matter if they are fitted to a mech gun platform or something like a big tank or walker. So powerful yes, but could easily vaporise you as much as the enemy. We'll discuss that next, but there are of course several others within the mech gun category. Among the vast and cacophonous arsenal of orcish weaponry, the custom Mega Blaster stands as a favourite amongst these belligerent Xenos creatures, a marvel of brute engineering and crude ingenuity. The custom Mega Blaster encapsulates all that an orc desires in a weapon, raw power, spectacular explosions and an audacious display of firepower. At first glance the custom Mega Blaster appears to be nothing more than a chaotic assemblage of mismatched components held together by sheer determination. It embodies the essence of orcish resourcefulness, a haphazard concoction of salvaged gubbins, battlefield debris and a dash of mork knows what. This erratic mishmash however belies the weapon's true potency, because orcs find themselves drawn to the custom mega blaster for the sheer thrill of its unrestrained might, and as with most orc weapons its inherent unpredictability stemming from its cobbled together construction. But of course this really only adds to the orcish appeal. The result is that each time an orc pulls the trigger, there's an overwhelming endorphin rush, an exhilarating sense of anticipation with the orc, feeling in that split second, will it unleash a cataclysmic explosion that sends enemies hurtling through the air, or will it simply sputter and fizzle out, or of course will it explode and vaporise me. And when the weapon does fire successfully, it does so with such an awe-inspiring magnitude as the custom Mega Blaster spews forth a torrent of energy that shatters the air with a thunderous roar, sending a blistering orb of destruction hurtling towards the target. The explosion that follows is a similarly howling, ear-splitting symphony of pure orc mayhem that leaves the battlefield participants nearby likely off their feet or any who are facing the impact zone smouldering from the sheer devastation. Aesthetically, also the custom Mega Blaster is very pleasing for an orc, bigger is almost always better, and the custom Mega Blaster's oversized haphazard appearance resonates deeply with their sensibilities. It tickles that chord in them that says, yes, this is a good un. Similarly to other orcs, the sight of an orc wielding a custom Mega Blaster is equally invigorating a splash in the face of refreshing orcishness. Such weapons are really a visual representation of their culture again with a K, and their penchant for extravagance. The direct and unapologetic approach force over finesse, you get the idea. The custom Mega Blaster's straightforward operation and power resonates deeply with the orc mentality because why bother with precision when you can just blast your way through obstacles, it's the obvious choice. But the thing is, orcs make all kind of weapons, including types of energy weapons seen in use by Imperial forces or even Xenos like the Eldar. But they willingly ignore laser weapons, or the more tame laser weapons at least, things that are not noisy or shooty enough. So something like a custom Mega Blaster fulfills the requirements of the orcs. It may not be dacker, but is very flashy, loud, and most importantly, good at killing. So when a very enthused mech is having a good idea, he'll be locked away in his workshed for days or hours. Orc knobs seek these kind of custom weapons because they likely have a good chance of showing up other orcs, and something like a custom mega blaster being a prime example. Any possible malfunctions are worth the risk for the potential to inflict massive damage to the enemy and massive satisfaction to the owner. It's hard to find any weapon more appropriately named, and which embodies both the spirit and ethos of such a raging war species as the Orc, than the Smasher Gun. It's a near-perfect design. Because usually a Smasher Gun 
is an even more incoherent assortment of scrap metal, twisted machinery and random gubbins than previous other mech constructions, and it goes without saying that any Umi would find it likely completely incomprehensible in its design. If you were an orc looking for a loud, destructive and generally offensive to Umi's weapon, then the Smasher Gun delivers on all fronts. So seeing the Smasher Gun in action for any orc is really a sight to behold, because what it does is, as you might imagine, hurl massive projectiles, often easily the size of small vehicles, across the battlefield with a bone-shaking roar. And these said projectiles are cobbled together from really whatever is to hand, heavy artillery shells, bits of wreckage, salvage from the battlefield, or just big rocks. It's basically the reverse of the tractor cannon, an incredibly powerful anti-gravity weapon, and when fired these colossal missiles careen through the air, leaving behind trails of smoke and spark as they hurtle toward their target. The impact of course being nothing short of devastating, creating shockwaves which are going to send enemies sprawling and structures collapsing in a cascade of debris. It can also be used by aiming it at an enemy or basically whatever an orc or grot may choose. As the narrow beam of energy grips a hold of the target, it will be lifted clear off the ground or even high into the air before being slammed back down or thrown against anything or anyone nearby. Alternately, for the laughs, an enemy vehicle may be lifted extremely high into the air before the beam is just shut off and the orcs find extreme hilarity in watching the enemy vehicle fall from the sky, and even more so if it lands on an unsuspecting unit or enemy or other vehicle below because of the incredibly destructive mess which inevitably follows. Yet what truly sets the smasher gun apart is its unorthodox method of aiming. Orcs attach a massive targeting reticle, often a crude metal circle with a painted X on it, to the weapon's firing mechanism. And this rudimentary sight is more of a symbolic gesture than a practical aiming tool, reflecting the orcish belief that proper aiming is secondary to the sheer volume of firepower unleashed, because this approach perfectly encapsulates the orcish mindset of shoot first, aim later emphasising their love for raw, unfiltered destruction over precision. The Smasher Gun's impact extends beyond its destructive capabilities though, because it serves as a rallying point for Orcs. It's a symbol of their ferocity, their insatiable thirst for combat, and their ingenuity. Because when an Orc mechboy brandishes a Smasher Gun, it becomes a declaration of intent, a proclamation that they're ready to charge headlong into battle, heedless of danger and drunk on the promise of carnage. The Smasher Gun, in many ways, really is the quintessential Orc weapon. Its construction, its ridiculous firepower, its design captures the very essence of the Orcs, its disregard for complexity and its unapologetic embrace of the sheer spectacle of destruction. It's the pure embodiment of the Orcs' complete enthusiasm for battle and war, their relentless pursuit of mayhem, their unwavering commitment to the belief that bigger, louder and more explosive is always better. Next is one of the most orc of orc weapons, the self-explanatory bubble chucker, which pretty much does what it says on the tin, although not really, because imperial observations of it seem to vary considerably, which makes sense to be honest when we consider the origin. The bubbles thrown out by the bubble chucker are strange energy spheres, or you could say force field bubbles, which vary in both size, solidity and opacity. They could be a stream of almost invisible bubbles bursting as if soap or sticking together to eventually form a larger sphere, and some may be the size of industrial wrecking balls, others small enough to push away with your hand. Of course, hoping that it doesn't somehow phase into your hand and cause it to just drop off or tear it into the warp, maybe dragging you with it, for that matter. If a bubble lands on a surface, it can increase until the entire object is surrounded by the giant bubble. If the bubble is undetectable, then those trapped within have no awareness or idea about it at all, 
until it begins to decrease in size. The bubble, the force field, can also harden at the same time, which could be an issue in the long term because of air, but usually the more immediate issue is that if an enemy fires a weapon while surrounded by this bubble, the consequences can be messy. Because anything fired within will bounce around, be it solid projectile energy or even promethium. If you were, say, an infantry person carrying a flame weapon, the results could be considerably unpleasant as they fire and then instantly shower themselves at close range with liquid fuel that immediately incinerates the victim while simultaneously using all oxygen within that bubble sphere. Essentially, to those around them, they would see the person immediately just burn to a cinder and collapse to the ground. And all of this, of course, is extremely comical to the orcs, likely to be seen shouting, SURPRISE SURPRISE, at the horrifyingly conflagrated guardsmen. Is with any orc weapon, the effects seem wildly variable. The only constant lies in frustrating the efforts of many Imperial Guard lines, as the force fields of orcs can be used in both offensive and defensive capacities, either trapping, crushing or hurling the foe, both deflecting and dissipating incoming fire. For the orcs, the bubble chucker is a curious, bizarre weapon which harnesses mostly the power of confusion, and it is considerably effective, leaving an enemy unsure not only how to respond, but how to protect against whatever may be coming in their direction. In the grim darkness of the far future, few sights evoke as much dread and terror among human forces as the trundling bullish silhouette of an orc tractor cannon, for it is truly a monstrous piece of artillery. The tractor cannon is a twisted creation of orc mech engineering and ingenuity. It's a nightmarish amalgamation of scavenged parts, brute force, and the orc's wild imagination, designed with a singular purpose in mind to drag anything in its line of sight, enemy vehicles, fortifications, even entire squads of soldiers across the battlefield and into the waiting jaws of an orc horde. Or, to put it in orc terms, to get that thing over here. To human Imperial forces, this weapon of unstoppable force is so intimidating because of its violent and mostly inescapable drag toward a very brutal death orchestrated by the orc's twisted sense of fun. Most humans facing down an orc horde, screaming, shooting, foaming at the mouth, and generally revved up with wah power, take a small crumb of comfort that they may hopefully be able to hold them at range for some time. Trust in the Emperor. Shoot those las guns. Maybe you'll survive. So being dragged across the battlefield against your will toward a mob of orc boys waiting with huge melee choppers is not anything even the most veteran guardsmen would want to face. Not to mention there may be plenty of enemies who are unaware that a large vehicle from their own force is being dragged toward them from the rear, smashing into them, decapitating guardsmen with brutal effect as it's dragged roughly over them toward the orc machine. Not to mention the disastrous consequences that can occur if the Gretchen in control makes an error in operation, which can definitely happen, and the tractor cannon's polarity is mistakenly reversed so that instead of dragging the target to them, suddenly the cannon itself is pulled hurtling across the battlefield before smashing headlong into its target, most likely also exploding violently on impact, much to the amusement of any orcs bothering to watch the comical misadventures of a grot crew. When the weapon is fired though, it unleashes this violent and erratic energy field which exerts an irresistible gravitic force on its target. Vehicles are torn from their positions and may well be torn apart completely by the forces depending on how any specific mech has constructed it. Similarly to the smasher gun or pulsar rockets, the sheer spectacle of witnessing one's comrades and equipment being wrenched and hurled by unknown forces, but most especially from the safety of cover and pulled kicking and screaming toward one of the most violent of enemies in M41, is a gut-wrenching sight, 
and overwhelms nearby allies with a sudden and intense feeling of vulnerability and despair. The tractor cannon's brutality is only even further exacerbated by the orc's penchant for revelry and violence. Any orcs waiting for de stupid umis to come flying toward them find immense revelry in the sheer insanity of the chaos they're creating. The sight of enemy forces being uprooted and thrown into a baying mob of boys only serves to stoke their bloodlust. The howling roars and raucous laughter that accompany the firing of a tractor cannon are a chilling reminder of the orc's sadistic glee in the face of absolute brutal carnage. And it's things like the tractor cannon as to why humans developed their pure Xenos hatred over the millennia. Inventions of pure malevolence like the tractor cannon that shatter the morale of even the most disciplined troops is a testament to the orc's innate ability to sow chaos and despair. In many ways, the tractor cannon is not an especially powerful weapon in the sense of how much impact it can really have to a large enemy force. It's not a rapid fire gatling weapon or some incendiary titanic plasma weapon. Its power is really in the psychological toll of witnessing one's comrades being torn apart or hurtling toward the enemy with absolutely no means of resisting or preventing it. This is why it's so greatly feared, and why many a grizzled Imperial Guard veteran may terrify new recruits in their company as their face turns to ashes when they witness the silhouette upon the horizon of an orc tractor cannon being wheeled into place. Because to face the tractor cannon is to come physically face to face in no uncertain terms with the twisted brutality and raw legendary savagery of the orcs, whether you wanted to or not. But now of course for a favourite, and it's come up before but only because it's so spectacularly orcish. Like most orc weapons, it does what it says in the tin. It's a big gun, it's a hell of a shock, it's a shock attack gun. And certainly in more ways than one, usually when it accidentally tears a hole in reality and the bearer and any nearby are sucked into the void. So the shock attack gun is really a monument to mech engineering at its wildest because it embraces a level of lunacy that only the orcs could really truly appreciate. It's a masterpiece of more Dakar, because the weapon is designed to channel raw, unruly energy of the war into a single cataclysmic discharge, but that's not the whole picture of its mind-boggling design and devastatingly unpredictable effects. It's a very strong favourite among orcs and a source of absolute terror for humanity. So the shock attack gun is truly bizarre. It's both a triumph and disaster. However it came to be is unknown, but it perfectly summates the principles by which orc tech is created, in the sense that undoubtedly the orc mechs likely knew what they wanted to make and pretty much succeeded, but you also probably shouldn't stand too close to it, as it functions by focusing a narrow force field through warp space, thus creating an entrance through this gateway at the front of the weapon. The exit is focused towards the target, and because it's orcs, what is fired through is nearly always something living, or more specifically, something very horrible and living. How does it achieve all of this? The answer is yes. Failures of the field whilst the living creatures are passing through are common, leading to their inevitably horrible deaths, but the process of travelling through this macro warp corridor is said to be mind-wrenchingly horrifying as they're essentially being projected through warp space, unshielded, open to the horrors of the warp, something not even an especially stupid orc would really agree to travel in this way. However, an angry squig or unwilling snotling, perhaps even a grot, these are far more likely candidates, because they likely have no say in the matter, plus only hold a very basic, near animalistic level of intelligence and are unlikely to understand the consequences of the process. But it's bad enough that they'll be driven into a berserker, mindless, panicked rage during the process of being propelled through even this short space of the Immaterium with no protection. And one may speculate, for example, on how long it actually feels for them travelling through that small warp space. It may be near instantaneous in reality, but for them, who knows how much time it could be. It may feel to the grot like many hours passing through. Nasher squigs, though, for example, are basically always angry, and so this rage is only likely intensified. 
As the orc mech attempts to aim the weapon, it's surely pretty hard to handle a big gun and then point its narrowed endpoint upon a very distant tiny thing, so very often the travelling enraged snots and squigs who are already very unhappy about this whole process combined with warp horrors that drive them out of their minds may burst out inside enemy vehicles or bunker positions or very often worse inside a target's armour or in the absolute worst case scenario ported inside the living creature's own body materialising in an apoplectic rabid frenzy whereby they begin ripping and tearing through the victims from the inside out or just generally lashing out at furiously whatever is nearest to them until they're either killed or die from lashing and flailing their own limbs and bodies apart in a mindless tantrum. Not to mention the most unpleasant aspect for any humans on the receiving end. That of course being that the snotlings being fired through this nightmare weapon are commonly said to materialise defecating uncontrollably, whilst also ripping and biting and shredding their way through whatever they find themselves in. So for any average Joe Guardsman who might be unlucky enough to have a raging snotling ported inside of their vehicles or in the nightmare scenario inside of themselves, which has been reported as having occurred, well, the consequences are going to be traumatising, and not just for themselves, but very likely everyone around them and having to witness a snotling and a bunch of teeth-filled Nasher squigs bursting out of their best mate as they foam at the mouth and are spewing offensive materials from every orifice simultaneously. Unsurprisingly, if you were inside of a vehicle, then the panic would be much the same. Havoc ensues as the crew attempt to either leave the vehicles or get the horrors outside. It's usually such an appalling chaotic situation that in a highly comedic scenario, the Imperium's most powerful pieces of hardware, like, say, a Shadow Sword tank, could become humiliatingly immobilised by not an Orc, not a Gretchen, not even some Gargant, but a single Snotling and a couple of Squigs. The distraction caused could be enough to crash the vehicle or leave it unable to respond to catastrophic incoming fire, or in the theoretical extremely rare circumstance that Orcs could come up with a plan and also execute it well, some orc tank buster boys may say smash their tank hammers or tank buster bombs upon an out of control, unfocused centerpiece of imperial pride as the frenzied grots inside spew their fluids upon the crew while scratching at them rabidly until it's all over in a cataclysmic, spectacularly offensive disaster for the Imperium. Of course, as noted, and given the nature of orcs almost by design, Something as contrived as a shock attack gun very regularly malfunctions, and this could simply mean it fizzles out doing nothing to the orc mech who probably would just give it a bash in to try and get it working again. It could overload and literally spin out of the mech's hands, firing its targets off wherever so that they appear back in reality hundreds of feet in the air and splatter back into the ground to the confusion of nearby enemy or those same enemy may bear witness as the snotlings and squigs exit the portal but no longer haul instead as if they had been fed through some kind of shredder so that all that emerges is a putrid shower of gore and viscera poured out all over any nearby imperial brothers in arms which even for stupid umis should surely stir some laughter. It's even been said that the orc mech in a catastrophic malfunction can somehow get fired through the weapon themselves. In a bizarre twist of fate, much to the extreme hilarity of nearby grots and any above average snotlings who will appreciate yet another day of existence. Because as comical as its results are to the orcs, most boys with half a brain will know to stay well clear of any mech wielding a shock attack gun. The variables that could create disaster are so numerous it's best left well alone. But despite the risks, mechs will still want to use them. Because after all, what other weapons could be such a bloody good laugh? Oi, you want to know about me death gun, do you? Well, let me tell you, this here ain't just no regular shooter, 
it's me best mate, me lucky charm, and the biggest source of good old war fun. First thing you gotta know is that when I'm holding me death gun, it's like I got the power of the old war flowing through me veins. It's like a big loud shout to gawk and mork that I'm ready to crump any gits dumb enough to mess with me. The weight of it in me hands makes me feel like I'm holding the very spirit of the war itself. Now, let me tell you about the different types of death guns, cause they ain't all the same. There's the shooter style death gun, big and chopping with daca. It's like mixing, unleashing daca while swinging it around like a chopper, smacking gits left and right. It's the perfect weapon for a lad who likes to get up close and personal while blasting him to bits. Then you got the snazzy snipper style death gun. This one's all about taking careful aim and picking off the biggest gits from a distance. It's like playing a game of hunting, waiting for the right moment to squeeze the trigger and watching as the bullet goes whizzing straight to the target's noggin. It's the kind of fun that makes me feel like real cunning orc outsmarting me enemies from afar. But me faves absolute is the Daka Daka Boom Death Gun. This one's a real piece of work. Let me unleash a torrent of Daka so fierce it feels like a storm of war is raining down on the battlefield. It's like my own personal thunderstorm. The noise of the bullet screaming is like music to me ears. And the ground shaking under the force of it all is like the rhythm of the war. When I squeeze down the trigger of my death gun, it's like unleashing a wave of daca that's been brewing up inside me. The roar of the bullet screaming out is like a qua wa, And the kickback is like a punch from Gork himself. Every shot fired like a punch straight in the gut. And the best part, you know, it's like playing a game with the universe. I aim at a bunch of umis, or umis, or any other get in the bullets. They got a mind their own. They go zigzogging, swirling, whizzing through the air, hitting everything in the way. You see, because it ain't just about hitting the target. It's about watching the chaos and mayhem it causes. It's like painting a fancy paint of all the destruction, and every shot is a stroke of war. Why would I swap me death gun for anything else? I won't. Cause ain't nothing else can give me the same feeling of power and the big good stuff. It's me way of showing the old verse that I'm an orc to be reckoned with. No shiny fancy gun or gubbins can compare to the raw unadulterated daca that me death gun delivers. So you see, me death gun, it ain't just a weapon. It's me inside me. It's everything. It's the true war spirit and I'd not swap that for anything in the galaxy. Well, maybe a bigger death gun for killing all the Umis with. Amidst the cacophonous battleground of the galaxy that is M41, where carnage and chaos reign supreme, huge titanic machine warriors battle for supremacy of entire worlds, their weapons powerful enough to incinerate, vaporize, and shatter the very geology of planets. From eternal tombs, ancient living metal enemies emerging to lay down terrifying fire from their conflagration weapons, darkness descends on human worlds as the ultimate bioweapon Xenos consume entire planets. And the nightmares of the warp scheme infinitely complex plans which culminate in deciding fates of tens of thousands of warriors on the battlefield. And then you have the orcs, whose logic extends to squigs are bitey, let's chuck them at the umis. And to fulfill this genius concept exists the squigapult, or sometimes also can be termed a lobber, which is fairly self-explanatory and fulfills all aspects of orc reason and logic, the squig catapult, the concept for which extends as far as we want this thing to go over there, how can that be achieved as simplistically as possible? So in many respects, Squigger Poults are, I would say personally, the epitome of orcish ingenuity. I like to always imagine an exhausted company of Imperial Guardsmen dug into their trenches and hive city defences. It's been many weeks and months for them having repelled brutal orc assaults. 
The sprawling battlefield is the landscape of war-torn earth, bodies mixed with wreckage, giant craters, billowing smoke from still-burning vehicles. Somewhere amidst the rumble of artillery and the distant cries of combat, the cry of INCOMING is heard. But there are no ear-splitting detonations, no ground-shaking vibrations or shockwaves. But soon after, a considerable amount of screaming. As they look into the sky and see a confusing scattering of objects flying haphazardly toward them. And as they land, raging, burning, gnashing, buzzing squigs are suddenly saturating the guard positions. Pandemonium ensues. This is the humble joy of the squig catapult. Because they are orcish in their nature, orcish by design. They're as varied as the orcs themselves, with each variant sporting its own unique brand of madness, very possibly conceptualised only days or even hours previous. When in terms of their ammunition, there's far too many variations of squig to list all, because many function with various unpleasant consequences, from exploding bile on impact to literal detonation, or a frenzied mass of muscled biting squigs which tear into guardsmen lines with limbs flying all over the place. Because squig catapults are generally very crude apparatus, which could literally just chuck squigs, or could be some sort of more mortar artillery based construction. All adorned with bouncing, squealing, raging squigs, a battle crazed orc operator joyfully loading up whole batches of these critters along with the grot, likely stifling some hur hur hurs as they ready to fire with anticipation. Pulling the release lever, the squigs will be catapulted high into the air, erratic unguided paths confounding enemy below, but it's full chaos that subsequently ensues as squigs rain down, bouncing all over the place, unpredictably crashing into enemy lines, causing disarray, carnage and general panic. Boom squigs are of course fed by orcs with volatile materials into their essentially explosive packed squigs, and these bulky, unstable squigs sit in the catapult as its highly tensioned arm trembles under the strain. With a thunderous roar, it hurls forth its payload, as the squigs now ticking time bombs hurtle toward the enemy ranks. As they impact, the resulting detonation throws any nearby off their feet, shrapnel, debris flying everywhere, and any hapless foes are engulfed in a maelstrom of fiery devastation. One of the more comedic squigs that can be fired would be, for example, the buzzer squigs, and by comedic I mean horrifying, because these are smaller than most squig and are kept within special pots by Gretchen. The pots are made from baked mud with holes in them to allow these squigs to breathe. But these squigs are very small, almost insect-like, and the purpose for this is of course to keep the squigs contained and also very, very hungry. And you can imagine why. Buzzer squigs are pretty unpleasant and usually will burrow into other larger squigs or animals and so depriving them of food leaves them in a quite irritated, if not raging disposition. So that once the pots are hurled across the battlefield into a trench line of unsuspecting human guardsmen, the pots smash open, unleashing a swarm of very angry buzzing squigs which seek out the nearest fleshy umi and tear into them burrowing deep inside, eating them alive from the inside out, not unlike so many tyrannid bioweapons. A bad day for the umis and a good laugh for the boys. But the pinnacle for this insanity is of course the squigoth catapult. And thankfully it doesn't mean a catapult that fires squigoths, although surely only a matter of time before some bright spark in the orc mobs figures that one out. Because as if a gargantuan titanic towering squigoth was not mad enough, imagine also mounted on the back of this some catapults flinging squigs. In a mind-boggling display of bravado, orc operators launch their squigs loaded with incendiaries directly from the squigoth's back, even more ludicrous as the squigoth charges forward, stomping so heavily their shattering vibrations damage imperial bastions, all whilst squigs are raining down as a volatile payload upon unfortunate guardsmen, who are arguably better off simply being crushed to a pulp by the squigoth. With the addition of squig catapults, it's now a mobile platform of destruction that leaves only flaming carnage in its wake. All of this is of course interesting, but against which enemies are these squig catapults most effective, you might ask? Well the answer is very simple, 
any and all who dared to stand in the way of the unstoppable green tide and its thirst for violence. Packed infantry formations, armoured vehicles, there can be no target safe, no mercy given from the sheer absurdity of the squig catapults. Their chaotic, some might dare to say, random trajectories of squigs leave even the most disciplined foes befuddled. While explosive squigs can bring down even the mightiest of war machines, whilst the more raging, biting squigs leave Daumis fleeing in terror. It is precisely this enthusiastic disregard of both common sense and combat convention that makes squig catapults such a potent weapon in the hands of the orcs. Laughter mingles with the ear-splitting scream of detonations. In a galaxy saturated with darkness and despair, the squig catapults remind that even in the most grim of settings, against the tragedy of so many conflicts that see sheer weight of material firepower laid down upon opposing forces, the absurdity of orc warfare knows no bounds. It seemed fitting to go from something that was as simple as let's throw squigs at the enemy because they might bite them to death and instead pivot to what is arguably the pinnacle of mechboy design. Arguably because it breaks all the rules of what makes the best orc weapons, the spectacularly ridiculous orc super zap gun. Now like many weapons in the galaxy of M41 and especially true of orc weapons, the Super Zap Gun is a scaled up version of its other iterations, the Big Zapper and Zap Gun, respectively. The Super Zap Gun, then, is simply a monstrously huge and powerful version of the basic Zap Gun that can be mounted on Orc Gargantum because it's the biggest ground war version, and yes, there is a larger Zap Cannons mounted on Orc ships. It seemed the sensible choice to go with. But for what it lacks in loud, grungy volume, for it has none of the roaring, ear-shredding good power of a shooter, it has no comedy effect either toward the enemy or its operator, and it's not even particularly impressive visually. So one would imagine that it's pretty low down the list of choices, and that would be true were it not for the sheer scale of its devastating impact upon the battlefield, a fact that any good mech would say was undeniable if they had the vocabulary to do so, which they likely don't. But despite what I said earlier about orcs shunning laser weaponry, this is true, they find laser weapons pretty boring all around, so a zap gun is not quite this, but it does operate as some sort of primitive energy cannon, the details of which are really uncertain by humans, although it has been described as being a long wire wound barrel which directs a crackling arc of electricity-like energy into the enemy, with its power being proportional to the nerve of its grot operator, because the longer they dare to hold the trigger or lever for, the more power will be unleashed. But given that it's a grot operating, that time span is not necessarily going to be huge. Still, zap guns are equally described as firing bolts of energy, which sounds, of course, familiar. They're also said to display anything from a blue to a coruscating green colour. So I think it's safe to say that the Imperium doesn't really understand or observe particularly closely how zap guns function, which is fine because likely neither do the orcs. Because of course the basic principles of mechs build it, cross their fingers and hope the erratic energy it produces is unleashed upon the foe rather than backfiring spectacularly is particularly applicable with the zap gun. Of course, it's very interesting as to how the orcs were able to even acquire or develop such technology, and the Imperium presumed that this was pilfered tech, but also once were able to monitor a mech boy constructing a zap gun, who, when later interrogated, Imperial techs were extremely confused to discover that the knowledge of its construction seemed innate to the orc race. Consequently, of course, the weapons are currently considered Xeno heresy by the Adeptus Mechanicus, standing orders are for Imperial troops to destroy them when encountered. But because of its scale as much as anything else, the operation of a super zap gun is a raucous and perilous affair, much due to its absurdity, because it's basically a titanic scale weapon. An orc mech fueled by his own boundless enthusiasm and the ceaseless urging of his fellow greenskins cranks and fiddles and tinkers 
with a series of mismatched dials, buttons and levers. As the device whirs and clanks, the mech hopes beyond hope that the energies he's attempting to wrangle will behave themselves. Often, the super zap gun emits random crackling discharges of energy that sizzle through the air, causing nearby orcs to leap for cover. But if and when the super zap gun actually fires as intended, its impact is nothing short of spectacular. Even for orcs, and even for orcs who would proudly say a good shooter is better any day than fancy mech doodads, a zap gun firing unleashes a jagged bolt of raw energy, part warp energy, part technological mishap. Its erratic line of fire cuts across the battlefield and upon impact detonates in a blinding pyrotechnic explosion that showers the surrounding area with an unpredictable array of random effects. These can range from turning enemies into charred cinders to causing localized time distortions that slow down or speed up movement, or of course just vaporizing anything around it. For the orcs, the super zap gun and the zap guns in general are more than a mere weapon. It's a testament to their singular belief in the sheer power of their collective will because by all reasonable logic, nothing else can really explain the ability for them to construct and successfully fire such a weapon beyond just wanting to see it happen. In the grand theatre of war that encompasses the galaxy in M41, the monstrosity of orc construction, the super zap gun, is a clear example of orc philosophy, for it is both cunning but brutal. Although another orc would vigorously disagree and say, no mate, that's rubbish is deaf, brutal, but cunning. Which I think is surely something we can all agree with, along with the orcs' entire approach to warfare, which largely amounts to a rowdy celebration of chaos and destruction, which leaves both foes and allies equally stunned and amazed, only made better by having in your hand at all times a good and proper shooter.